In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So, here we are at uh, what is considered by many to be the final feast of the Christmas season, the Feast of Epiphany. A very significant uh, event, certainly during this Christmas season, and, uh, and one that has great importance for us as we uh, take the light that has been given to us during this Christmas time and uh, share it with others, move out into the world beyond Christmas um, and to bring that light to others. As you uh, perhaps uh, are able to see there, our Christmas scene, uh, we have the three wise men, Belfazar, Caspar, and Melchior, together with their trusty camel, whose name I can't remember, uh, assembled there at the, uh, at the stable in Bethlehem. Although Matthew says it was a house, so they may have arrived a little later on after the Holy Family's had a chance to Check out the real estate situation in Bethlehem. So we are here to, uh, to enjoy this liturgy as we do all the liturgies of the Christmas season, the beautiful feast of, uh, of Epiphany, and uh, to give thanks for the light that has come into the world, the light that we are so attracted to. Eh? We're like moths, you know, the light. We're drawn to goodness and beauty and truth and friendship, and, uh, you know, when you see yourself crying at a movie, why are you crying at a movie? Because there's something in there that appeals to your deepest sense of what is right, what is good, you know, and uh, so that's the light. We're attracted to the light, and the light is around us in so many ways. So let us pray that we can see the light more clearly and that we, we can become that light of Christ for others. Lord Jesus, you raise us to a new life in you. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you fill us with the light of life. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you nourish that life through the gift of the Eucharist. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we, who know you already by faith, may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Let us be seated now for the reading of God's holy word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away. 
and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, and all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Every nation on earth will adore you. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. In his days, many righteous flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. May he have dominion from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. May the kings of Tarshish and, and of the isles render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all kings fall down before him. All nations give him service. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. For he delivers the needy one who calls, the poor and the one who has no helper. He has w pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it is now, been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. When Her Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. 
When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Have you noticed? Christmas is all about light. I guess it's kind of obvious. It's so obvious that we sort of miss it. We take it for granted. But from John's gospel on Christmas Day, we hear, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And what came into being through him was light. And the light was the light of all peoples. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. And from Isaiah today, your light has come and the glory of the Lord shines upon you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. And in today's gospel, the wise men are guided to the Christ child by the light of a star that had guided them for over a thousand miles. And then there are the Christmas lights that decorate our homes, and those lights are everywhere this year. And of course, December 22nd, the days get longer, a little more light, a couple of minutes here, a couple of minutes there. How happy we all are to finally see sunshine after many gloomy and cloudy days. As I was saying, we are like moths. We are drawn to the light. It is where our faith begins, in the darkness, seeking light, seeking insight, understanding, joy, peace, hope, meaning, purpose, direction. I came across this great reflection on light in this little booklet, Daily Reflections for Advent and Christmas, by Michelle Frankel Donnet liturgical press. And she says something very insightful. As a chemist, light is part of my toolkit. Chemists see light as active. It doesn't just illuminate what is there, temporarily driving away the darkness. It can fundamentally change what it touches. One molecule becomes another. Matter is transformed. Even more wonderfully, once the light has soaked into a molecule, light can shine forth again in new ways and new directions. As we come to uh, what is popularly considered the end of the Christmas season, I encourage you, I encourage myself, to think about the ways in which we have experienced the light of Christ this Christmas. I can say without fear of contradiction that the light was there for all of us. We may have, we may have missed it this year for so many reasons, but the light was there nevertheless. And maybe in hindsight, you and I will look back on this Christmas and we will see the light that was there. So much of the Christian life revolves around light. Christ's light, yes, but you and I being ablaze with that light ourselves. The wise men, we are told, return to their home by a different route, and we can be sure that they were ablaze with light. They were changed people, having been in the presence of the true light. 
I pray that this year, the light of Christ will soak into me, into all of us, changing us, transforming us, and most crucially, shining out of us, banishing darkness, raising spirits, and giving us the courage to witness to the light that has come into our world in Jesus Christ. I invite you now to stand for the prayers of the faithful. My brothers and sisters, with confidence in Christ who has been revealed to the nations, let us draw near to him with joy and hope and offer our gift of prayer and worship for the good of the church and for those in need. For the church, a rich diversity of people who reveal God's many gifts. For the catechumens and those seeking a deeper relationship with Christ. For those who manifest and uphold the dignity of all human beings and life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this country, its peoples and leaders, for nations clouded by ethnic and racial prejudice, for all who reflect God's goodness to others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those seeking employment, housing for or safety, for the sick, the homebound, and recovering, for all who face difficulties. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spiritual and physical well-being of all parishioners, for all who have fallen asleep in the faith recently, and in memory of Mary Labonte, for all our loved ones and those who mourn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in a special way, we pray for Hubert Splinter today. Lord God of all nations, let the radiance of your incarnate word pierce the darkness that covers the earth. That, making radiant by the, made radiant by the dawn of peace and justice, we may beckon all nations to walk as one in your light through Christ our Lord. Lord God, entreat of goodness to receive it. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness, we receive the wine we offer. The human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be Lord God, we ask you to save us and be pleased with the sacrifice. Pray, brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, O Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which are offered not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed, and received, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, 
we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Using the second acclamation, the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis de Sales, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now, at the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. And we have this. Special blessing for uh, Epiphany. The Lord be with you. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you too a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. And so, when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him 
whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Let us go in the peace of Christ.